Hey folks, Dabber Jammer here with a guide for all the resources in Loop Hero. For each of the 14 resources, I'll tell you what it is, how to get it, and then I'll even throw in my favorite way to farm each type. Timestamps and chapters are set up below to easily find what you want. If you like what you see, tell me by hitting the subscribe button for more gameplay and guides. Alright, let's dig in. Number 1. Stable Wood. You get 1 Stable Wood by collecting 12 Stable Branches. On an expedition, you can get them by placing forest and thicket tiles, or by passing grove tiles. You can also get them by surrounding and unlocking a treasury tile, because they pop out a bunch of resources. Finally, you can get them by killing the following enemies. A chest or a mimic from a battlefield tile, a flesh golem near a blood grove, a scarecrow from a wheat field, and a wooden warrior from a village tile. Not a regular village, but a village which spawns from 10 forest or thicket tiles. You can also get them in your camp if you surround a lumberjack building with forests. You will get one branch for every loop you complete up to the number of forest tiles around a lumberjack tile. What's my favorite way? I always use grove tiles on expeditions as rat wolves are the easiest enemies. As I put more and more groves down, the loop just becomes a branch generator. Number 2. Preserved Rock You get one preserved rock by collecting 10 preserved pebbles. On an expedition, you get preserved pebbles by placing rock and mountain tiles or by passing a cemetery tile. You can also get them from surrounding and unlocking a treasury tile. If you create a mountain peak by placing rocks or mountains in a 3x3 grid, you will get a lot of pebbles. If you have a mining pick equipped in your camp supply tools section, you will get one pebble every time you pass your campfire. My favorite way to get preserved rocks? Run as a warrior who benefits the most from rock and mountain tiles and make sure to place them every time you can. Number 3. Stable Metal You get one stable metal by collecting 13 scrap metal. On an expedition, you get scrap metal by letting extra gear cycle through your inventory. You can also get it from surrounding and unlocking a treasury tile. My favorite way? Run as a rogue. Each trophy you get, when turned in for gear at the campfire, will still count towards scrap metal even if you never see the item it was exchanged for. Number 4. Food Supply You get one food supply by collecting 12 rations. On an expedition, you get rations by placing meadow tiles. You can also get them by killing the following enemies. A flesh golem near a blood grove, a scarecrow from a wheat field, or field of blades in an overgrown field. An overgrown field comes from placing a wheat field next to an A village, which comes from 10 forest or thicket tiles. In your camp, building farms will generate rations for completed loops just like the lumberjack. If you have a skinning knife equipped in your camp supply tools section, you can get rations from killing rat wolves. My favorite way to farm these? Run as a warrior who needs a little help in the regen department and put meadows down every time you can. Number 5. Orbs of Expansion These only come in whole orbs. On an expedition, you have a chance to get one when you fight more than 4 monsters in a single fight. The more enemies there are, the higher chance you have to get an orb. There are lots of tile combinations to get four in a single fight. Vampire mansions are very useful for this. A vampire mansion placed near a regular village tile will spawn a vampire and four ghouls for the next three loops. Or you can place a vampire mansion near almost anything else that will spawn enemies, groves, cemeteries, spider cocoons, etc. to add a vampire to try and get four or more enemies. My favorite way to farm these? Vampire mansions near groves. Early on, the groves won't have enough time to spawn three plus rat wolves in one loop, but in later loops when you have more fights, they will. Number six. Orb of Immortality. These only come in whole orbs. You get these from defeating chapter bosses. What is it used for? Well, when you die, you can choose to use these in order to keep 100% of the items you gained from the expedition. Pretty handy when you die after a long expedition. My favorite way to get these? Occasionally do runs that are focused more on fighting the boss than gathering resources. Number 7. Book of Memories. You get one book of memories by collecting 10 memory fragments. On an expedition, you can get memory fragments by overfilling your card deck at the bottom of your screen. You can also get them from killing the following enemies. Tomes near abandoned bookeries, watchers near temporal beacons, and watcher mages near both temporal beacons and abandoned bookeries. You can also get fragments by building a cemetery in your camp, then passing cemetery tiles on an expedition. My favorite way to farm these? Don't place every card down the second you get it. You usually don't have to. Wait, let lesser cards cycle through and you'll be swimming in memories in no time. Number 8. Metamorphosis You get one metamorphosis by collecting 20 noticeable changes. On an expedition, you can get noticeable changes by transforming tiles. There are tons of options here. Abandoned bookeries, blood paths, blooming meadows, burning forests, empty treasuries, goblin lookouts, hungry groves, mountain peaks, oases, reeds, overgrown fields, ransacked villages, counts lands, shipwrecks, towns... I suggest looking them up on the wiki and you'll get a description of each of those and how you can create them. My favorite way to farm these? Run with rocks and oblivion cards. Set up a mountain peak, oblivion one tile, then place another rock. You will get a bunch of noticeable changes each time you reform the peak. Number 9. Orb of Afterlife You get one orb of afterlife by collecting 10 pitiful remains. You can only obtain these by killing vampires and undead enemies in Act 2 or higher. My favorite way to farm these? By using vampire mansions to help with orbs of expansion, which you need a lot of to upgrade your camp, you'll pick up plenty of orbs of afterlife. If not, mix vampires and cemeteries on a run and you'll be all set. 
Number 10, Astral Orbs. You get one Astral Orb by collecting 10 Time Shards in Act 2 or higher. You can only obtain these by killing Mage and Cosmic type enemies. Those are Prime Manor, which are pretty rare, Vampire Mage, Tomes, Watchers, Watcher Mages, and Dark Slimes. Again, check the wiki to find how to spawn these enemies. My favorite way to farm Astral Orbs? Run with Bookeries and place them so they overlap the loop more than one time. They will run out of charges very quickly, and once the Bookeries are abandoned, Tomes will join every fight near them. Number 11, Orbs of Crafts. You will get one Orb of Crafts by collecting 10 Craft Fragments. You can only obtain these by killing artificial and object type enemies in Act 2 and higher. Those enemies are Slimes, Chests, Tomes, Gargoyles, Living Armor, Scarecrows, and Wooden Warriors. My favorite way to farm Orbs of Crafts? I never had to farm for these specifically. I used Battlefields a lot, so in between regular Slimes and the Chests from Battlefields, I had plenty. Number 12, Orbs of Evolution. You get one Orb of Evolution by collecting 10 Living Fabric. You can only get these by killing plant and living enemies in Act 2 and higher. Those are Rat Wolves, Spiders, Mimics, Goblins, including Leaders and Goblin Archers, Bandits, Harpies, Flesh Golems, Mosquitoes, Fields of Blades, Scorch Worms, Fishmen, and Sirens. My favorite way to farm Orbs of Evolution? I use Groves almost every single run, if you haven't caught on to that yet, and Rad Wolves drop a living fabric. Number 13, Orbs of Unity. You get one Orb of Unity by collecting 10 Shapeless Mass. You can only get these by killing Swarm and Liquid enemies in Act 2 or higher. Those are Slimes, Blood Clots, Ghosts of a Ghost, Swarms of Bats, Jellyfish, Dark Slimes, and Fields of Blades. My favorite way to farm these? I never had to specifically farm for these, but if I had to, I'd run Vampire Mansions since they summon bats. I had plenty of from slimes and the swarms of bats summoned by vampires. Last but not least, number 14, Hydrogen. Hydrogen is obtained and used in the alchemy process. You unlock alchemy by building the alchemist's tent. It allows you to decompose or break down resources into hydrogen and then use the hydrogen to synthesize other resources. This is super helpful when you just need one more orb of something to upgrade a building. My favorite way to farm hydrogen? I break down the more abundant resources like wood or books of memories and turn them into things that don't drop very often, like orbs of evolution. Well that should do it for this Loop Hero resource guide. If you like what you see, hit that like button and hit subscribe for more gameplay and guides like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.